Well, thank you very much, Jean. And thanks so much for the opportunity to be here. Um, and thank you for your leadership and your partnership in the work. So starting in March of 2020, the National Low Income Housing Coalition led together with over 2000 organizations and many more impacted people from across the country, a national campaign for rent relief now. Together, we called for a national moratorium on evictions for non-payment of rent and substantial emergency rental assistance to ensure that renters could stay current on their rent and landlords could continue to maintain and operate their properties. So ultimately, Congress provided $46 billion in emergency rental assistance, an unprecedented level of support for low-income renters. For perspective, it's more than 46 times what the federal government allocated to help renters during the Great Recession. And emergency rental assistance taken together with the federal eviction moratorium was the broadest action taken by the federal government to keep low-income renters stably housed in decades. So once Congress provided the resources, the National Low Income Housing Coalition worked very closely with the White House and across the administration, as well as with impacted people, with our state and local partners, with program administrators, to together build a new national infrastructure to get these vital resources to the tenants most in need and keep them stably housed. There was great urgency to this work because we were racing against time to prevent people from losing their homes during a pandemic as eviction moratoriums were challenged. And emergency rental assistance got off to a slow start. It was slow work to build, staff, and administer major new programs during a global pandemic. It takes time to design effective programs that center and prioritize people with the lowest incomes and people of color. So we tracked and analyzed programs as they got up and running, ultimately tracking over 500 emergency rental assistance programs throughout the country. We researched emergency rental assistance implementation, we identified and amplified best practices. We created and shared tools to improve programs. And through this work, we quickly learned the features of successful ERA programs, those that are able to reach the lowest income and the most marginalized people. Program features like robust and equitable outreach, short, simple applications available in multiple formats and languages, limiting the burdensome documentation requirements, using self-attestation for eligibility. <clears throat> so some program administrators included these program features early, uh, others were resistant for a variety of reasons. And as we learned both the best practices and the obstacles to getting ERA to tenants in need, we shared those learnings with the Biden administration and we made recommendations for actions that the White House could take to improve program performance. And it was very clear throughout the process that the entire Biden administration shared our sense of urgency in preventing evictions. And they were committed to doing the hard work of improving ERA programs with a willingness to make needed real-time course corrections to ensure that this money reached those most in need. So today, despite the slow start, and because of the hard work and partnerships, over 7 million ERA payments have been made, keeping millions of households, predominantly the lowest income people and people of color, stably housed during the pandemic. And this kind of successful alignment of resources to those with the greatest needs doesn't happen by chance, and especially when working so quickly. It happens only with deliberate and purposeful program design and outreach that center equity as the National Income Housing Coalition, our partners, and the full Biden administration prioritized. ERA was also an accelerant for communities to put new tenant protections in place, protections that will long outlast this current ERA funding. NLIHC's partners and allies helped to enact or implement over 150 new state and local tenant protections in 2021 alone. And they are continuing now 
to work to push state and local officials to use more of their state and local fiscal relief fund dollars for rental assistance and other affordable housing solutions. About $13 billion have been set aside for affordable housing, which is significant, but much more is possible with these funds. And we certainly appreciate the Biden administration's efforts to encourage local communities to do more with these funds. We have much more work to do. There is remaining ERA to get to tenants in need, and there are significant remaining unmet needs. And there will be unless and until Congress funds long-term solutions at the scale necessary, and until communities have robust tenant protect, robust and permanent tenant protections in place. So we have clear proof of the effectiveness of ERA. And with that comes an opportunity and bipartisan support for making ERA a permanent program. So we have to do so to maintain the infrastructure that communities worked so hard to build and to provide assistance that can help families avoid the long-term harms of eviction. And everybody at the National Low Income Housing Coalition and our partners across the country look forward to continued partnership with the White House in this work. Thank you, Jean. I'll turn it back over to you.